Teen Hearts is a Lemmings-like puzzle adventure game. With incredible narrative and beautiful environments. It is very handcrafted, old style Victorian, very nostalgic. With charm, narrative, just loads going on. There's also um, a, a really good story to it and a narrative that I think uh, players will really fall in love with. The story that goes alongside is so unexpected. A tale of family, loss and redemption. A story of love and compromise uh, while you're solving puzzles. Tin Hearts has a long history. It began actually quite a long time ago, uh, back in 2016 when we first founded uh, Rogue Sun. At the time we were actually looking to do kind of a small game to, to I guess, test ourselves as a new studio and test the waters of uh, VR as well. So it actually, Tin Hearts started as a VR project. During those early days of prototyping, we discovered that um, having gameplay come to you as opposed to you kind of going out to the game especially given the issues around kind of locomotion and moving around uh, in big environments uh, we're like okay well what if we keep the environment small and you know bring bring the game to you I'm a big fan of uh, puzzle games in general. I, I, I love problem solving in, in games. A bit of head scratching is always enjoyable, I find. Lemmings is, is kind of a classic that I, I feel hasn't really been explored in a long time. When we first started trying to brainstorm what we were going to do as a new team, it felt like an opportunity to explore this type of gameplay. There's a, a group of soldiers, they follow each other. It's very Lemmings-like in that aspect. But this game also has a much broader scope. It's 3D, you're exploring um, Albert's house in this Victorian setting. We have a huge range of different machines and inventions and toys that you unlock as you play. And it's really about the interactions between all these mechanics in the puzzles that evolve your thinking and evolve the way that you're playing as you progress. It's a very simple, uh, when you first look, uh, game premise, but as soon as those mechanics start rolling in, they just complement each other so well. One level you might interact with a certain mechanic one way, and as soon as an another machine gets added, you then have to completely see it from a different point of view, all of the things you've learned previously. <laughs> But gameplay-wise, it's all about the toys. It's about yeah. what you can do, the inventions that Albert makes. We use the term Rube Goldberg a lot, where it's like you use one toy to activate another toy to activate another toy, and it just creates this wonderful chain reaction, chain reaction that yeah. looks and feels brilliant from a, a player perspective. Every time I play the game, I use the... the the path projection. <laughs> I literally, I literally, I'll come in the room, I'll pause the game, and then I'll literally put all the things out until I basically solved it. If I can do it that way, if this works well on the first sort of act one, act two, it gets more tricky when you get into the bigger levels. But um, yeah, I do a lot of pausing and <laughs> doing the path. Every single level builds on every previous one. Every two or three levels, there is a new sort of mechanic, a new feature, a new ghostly power, a new machine to work with. So it never really gets boring. The Art of Tin Arts, it's a Victorian age, like an alternative Victorian age, and everything is made like it's made for the world of Tin Hearts. It has a very bespoke feel to it. We are talking like realistic proportions, for example but with an illustration style layer on top of it and everything is very hand painted like it wouldn't exist in the outside world of Tin Hearts. So it's, it's a lot more kind of immersive. Everything is like Toy Story with a sprinkle of magic on top of it. Oh, what's this, Daddy? Hmm? Where? Uh, no, 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 best leave that be. But what is it? I want to take a peek, please. I, you will, you will, when it's ready. 
The sort of setting for the game, we like to say it's an alternative kind of Victorian kind of steampunk world because obviously there's a lot of kind of magic and contraptions that wouldn't necessarily work in a realistic setting. It sort of expanded out of the main character, the toy soldier. It just felt right. The mechanics that we wanted to explore, the story that we wanted to explore, the Victorian setting just made a lot of sense. And again, you know, kind of nod to sort of the Britishness of the studio. We wanted to have that sort of character there as well.